Howdy y'all, we got a good Tenant 10 for you today. This is the Tenant 10 for September 12th of 2023. I'm Matt, that's my brother Tim. I think we got a killer lineup here for you today. If you're wondering why we've been wearing the same thing in the last three videos, Tim's got me working harder than a one-eyed cat watching two mouse holes out here. We got another Tenant 10 coming for you today. It is a killer one. Let me know your favorite old Southern expression in the comment section below. I love old Southern expressions. You know what's coming up very soon? Hashtag Buckholtz Week. We got Buckholtz Week coming out. Matt and I flew to Oregon, filmed with Talon Buckholtz. We did walkthroughs of the gardens. We got some cultivar highlights coming out. It's over out. a week and a half of content. Top fives, walkthroughs. You know, Talon doesn't really allow people to be in that garden a lot. This is one of the first times you'll really see this garden showcased in a full video done, you know, exquisitely. I think Corbin outdid himself. There's drone footage, there's gimbal footage, there's cultivar highlights, there's conifer highlights. That two-part walkthrough, I think, may be the best video we've ever done. It possibly, it very much possibly could, but I like the top five most outrageous plants at Buckholtz Nursery. Oh man, that one's gonna be hype. I, I get chills just thinking, that one's crazy. Be, be ready, hashtag Buckholtz Week. Forget Shark Week, we're bringing it. It's probably over a week and a half of content. We're still calling it Buckholtz Week. Let's get into today's 10 at 10. First up, we got Japanese lanterns. Y'all, this is one of our introductions. It sold out on Mr. Maple. We found another set of these available here. And this is one of our very first introductions. It has a uh, foliage that cups downward like a Japanese lantern. I love this plant. It is unique. It's interesting. Incredible reds to almost pink reds. I've had it be orange in the fall, but typically red is the primary color, which makes excellent looking colors for those little hanging lanterns. Now this tree is also a really irregular funky shape. It kind of spirals for a Japanese maple. So you get these irregular branches and those lanterns just adorn that and hang off from there. I think it's perfectly named. I think it's a very funky tree. If you're into Japanese maples, Japanese lanterns is one that's gonna look very different than everything else in your collection. You're gonna wanna have a Japanese lantern today that's gonna sell out quick. Make sure to check out fast. Many items, they don't, we don't, our website doesn't hold it for you until we can complete that checkout process. Once you get that order number, you've got the tree held with your name on it. So make sure you check out fast today. Good looking plant. All right, another famous one here. What do we got next, Tim? Naka Komodo Weeping, the national Boom. treasure of Japan. This, the coolest tree I've ever seen is a Naka Komodo Weeping. So if you ask me what my favorite Japanese maple is, you know, I can answer that, what's my favorite cultivar, but my favorite tree on the entire planet, y'all, is Naka Komodo Weeping. This thing is insane. We got to go see a 400 year old tree in Japan. It's the national treasure of Japan. This tree first made in the United States, so the name National Treasure. Very cool plant, parent plant to Jiro Shidari, parent plant to what became Ryusen, parent plant, great, great granddaddy to what became Dragon Master. The possibilities are endless, incredible genetics in this lineage. I heard rumors of this story, and the story was that, you know, this tree sat up on a hill, and it was one of the oldest trees in Japan, and those things are true, and then they said that monks guarded this tree. We went and saw it on a rainy day, so I don't know if the monks were taking... I don't know if they were taking a day off. Yeah, nobody threw a spirit mirror or anything. I was good. <laughs> but this tree has some twisting and contorting with it with age. You're already starting to see it on some of the branches. You can get some nice hooking to it. When we got to see it in Japan, Nakata-san took us to go see it. It had, it was in peak fall color. They made I mean, it sound like they were like temple guards. Like your life is in peril if you get too close. <laughs> it was that awe-inspiring though. We went on a perfect day. Fall color was premium. It was an orange. It was rainy. Oh, it was, it was drizzly. Misty, drizzly. And it was in perfect fall color. Ah, incredible it, plant. Now, some accounts of this tree say that it's over 600 years old, conservatively 400. There were stakes that we had the translator, you know, translate the comments on the stakes, and they the were over 200 years old. The stakes holding up some of the branches, 200 years. Right. So if you plant this tree and you wait 400 years, you can have an exact tree like the one in the picture. It is awesome though. Uh, maybe 600. Maybe six, yeah, it might take six, I don't know. Phenomenal tree though, exceptionally durable. This one's gonna work zones five through nine. Does great in full sun. Tends to make more of an umbrella type shape unless you stake up a central leader. Exceptionally heat tolerant, durable Japanese maple. And uh, I think one that you should all be growing because it's such an interesting piece of Japanese maple history. Get the national treasure of Japan. The Japanese maple is the national treasure of Japan and plant it in your garden. That's a good one. All right, next up we got Oshio Benny. Yo, Oshio Benny, this was one of uh, Pat 
uh, Dai, Coach Pat Dai, loved Japanese maples of Auburn University. This was one of his favorite red uprights down there in the Auburn area. Maybe because of the fall color. The fall color. The fall color can get you some real bright oranges to reds. And this is a tree that's very heat tolerant. And it gives you a unique shade of red than many of the other red uprights. Now, I knew Coach Dai because he was a maple fan more than a football fan. Like, I would go down there and talk with him. It was fun because when he went into restaurants with him, that's like in Auburn and Alabama, you know, that rivalry. People would stand up like the president walked in when you walked into a restaurant with him, and they'd be like, hold on, let me sign a few things. All right, now, guys, let's go back and talking about those Macaulay Yetsa Boots and Tops. I, I, I remember going to the restaurant, <laughs> and I'm there at the buffet getting some catfish, <laughs> and people walking up to me, and they're saying, do you know who you're sitting with? Do you know how honored you should be? Do you know how honored you should be? And I'm like, <laughs> Coach Dot, incredible guy, though. Super fun. Made a heck of a steak. I do miss him. Uh, he passed away a little after COVID and just such a phenomenal Japanese maple lover. That was one thing that he said, there ain't nothing more American than a Japanese maple. And uh, Oshio Benny being one of his favorites, we couldn't get him to do a top five, but I know this would be high on the list. Yeah, and it is a really good red upright. I like it because it can give you some brick red colors. It's not your traditional deep maroon red. And the fall colors are very different as well, like Matt talked about with some bright oranges and then some reds late. I mean, this is an excellent red upright that many people need to have in their garden. You get some pink reds in the spring. You also get a larger overall leaf. Uh, not to be confused with some that are similar, this is the Oshio Benny, O-S-H-I-O. -O. Not to be confused with Oshu Benny or Benny Hoshi or Hoshi Zor. I mean, there's a million different things. Hoshi Rennie. You start, you, <laughs> yeah, real confusing. you can get real confusing real quick on many of the Japanese names. You don't see this one offered a lot anymore, though. It's kind of getting rare in the trade. It's kind of disappeared a little bit. It is. You need to get one today for your garden. Oshio Benny. Here's another deep south one. We got Baton Rouge on the table, y'all. So Matt and I, we're up in New Jersey, and we hear of this tree down in Texas, and we drive all the way down to our house, spend one night, then we, we drive all the way down near Houston, <laughs> Texas, to a nursery that found and introduced Baton Rouge. We saw a lot of these in Louisiana, though, for some reason, even I, though it's from Texas. I don't know. The, the name means red stick one? or red twig. <laughs> now, this one was growing just 30 minutes north of Houston, Texas, so exceptionally heat tolerant. This one's still gonna work zones five through nine, but be super durable. Now this one gets a red coral bark during the winter. So it's one of the most heat tolerant of the coral bark selections, giving it a nice year round interest, even in the super hot climates. One thing I've really liked about Baton Rouge is while you can get some yellows in the fall, you often get a lot of red in the fall. And so it gives a very unique fall color and it goes to that red color much quicker than your typical coral bark Japanese maple. Now this one's gonna work zone six through nine. Now, uh, don't be afraid, even if you're in a, a zone like zone six, about putting this one in a higher heat area. It can handle it. I've actually got this one up next to a brick wall at my parents' place. It eats that heat up. It's an exceptionally durable plant, especially once established. And a good grower too, typically at over a foot, sometimes a foot and a half of growth a year. Good winter interest Japanese maple for your garden. If you got Bihu last week, pair this with it. You got a different fall color and different bark color. Awesome plant. All right, y'all, we got a little bit of eye candy coming back at you in some massive sizes. Check out the size of these eye candies. Eye candy, a seedling Talon Buckholz name from Alpenweiss. Incredible colors. Leaf this one out slow for your best overall interest in this one. It tends to be very multi-stem, so it kind of wants to do this spreading out thing and get a bunch of branching going on. I like to give it a high canopy so it leafs out slowly. That's the way to get the most pink in this thing. Go check out the cultivar highlight Tim did on this one in Mr. Maple Gardens earlier this spring, phenomenal colors. Now this one will be a little bit greener right now. You know, in the spring, you let it leaf out slowly, you're gonna get really intense reticulated variegation with some really nice pinks in there. Check out that full cultivar highlight at Maplewood Gardens, you're gonna really like it. Dude, I gotta grow those seed. We gotta steal that plant. Have you ever seen these offered in this kind of size? Guys, can you guess what this is? Oh my gosh, these are Ruby Day Sophias, y'all. These are massive. Ruby de Sophia is a selection that is very unique and very different. A lot of these have been grown in a little bit tighter area, so they're getting a little bit of height to them, but it curves and twists and contorts, and it even gets these knuckles on it with the reticulated style Japanese maple. This one is extra curvy. It has everything going on. This one is very interesting because it kind of contorts. So think of something in that Go Series top vein, soft spring pinks, almost reminds me a little bit of like an Akashigatatsu Sawa, but instead of being a tall upright, it wants to be multi-stemmed, it wants to be contorted. It gets super funky in the shape, making it excellent for a container garden. Typically at only around six feet, even in 10 years plus, a dwarfer form overall, incredible color patterns, 
incredible shape. I think one of the more unique shapes of a reticulated form out there. Yeah, I mean, it is really unusual. Usual. Think of it as like a contorted ghost. I mean, it's pretty, pretty spectacular. Very unusual. Think Jermaine's Gyration X like pastel. Yeah, X yeah. X amber ghost. I mean, that's what you're getting with this plant. It's some really nice amber hues with some cream reticulation. Amazing, especially that unique shape it develops. Here's a little nurseryman trick. This is a great time of the year to pick up plants. A lot of these plants have filled out their pots. They're ready for three gallons. Guys, this, this I would normally pull that to go right into a three. That's massive. It's got the base. It's got the caliper for a three. Steal in a one gallon right now. Grab these Ruby Day Sophia before I have to repot them. <laughs> Guys, if you love those Cecilifolium types, a couple weeks ago we, we ended up dropping Brocade Jackus Potus, then we dropped Hanezu Hagaromo. Guys, we're dropping Benny Hagaromo, and this is a red, upright, very vigorous angel feather Cecilifolium. Yeah, named by a guy named Benny. Uh, his last name's Hagaromo. Really popular tree. Everybody copies what I say in the videos, just let me do it. <laughs> Benny Hagaromo was a, a famous guy in Japan, uh, had angel feather cape he wore a lot and incredible red fall color on this tree. <laughs> you know, Matt may make up some stories, but this one is, get that name of Hagaromo, which is really this describes part of this feather style structure. He's friends with Benihana. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really cool plant. The spring color on this is a bright red to deep maroon. You can check out some of our photos on our website. It does fade a little bit. New growth flushes again return to some of that red color, but this is a vigorous tree. It makes a very tall tree relatively quickly. We've got a good size one of these at Maplewood Gardens, and this turned into one of the largest trees in the landscape fairly quickly over there. You'll be singing Benny and the Jets the way this one gets out in your garden. It's not uncommon for this one to reach Seriu-like growth rate. It puts on over a foot and a half of growth a year. I would say it's one of the very fastest growing Japanese maples. Doesn't put on a ton of width, but it gets tall quick. It is fairly narrow. Yeah. I mean, most of the Benny Hagaromos I've seen have been fairly narrow. Now that could just be of time, and as it you know gets older, it may get wider and wider. But our 20 year old Benny Hagaromo is probably 25 to 30 feet. And, you know, it's probably not much wider than 10. I mean, it, it stays fairly narrow for a Cecilifolium type. And this one gives you some good color. I love that transitional color where you go from the red kind of into the emerald green. Right in the middle, you kind of get this weird blue green kind of color. It's an interesting shade. It really does that all season, especially as it puts on new growth. The new growth will be that bright pink to red on this one. Early spring, the whole tree is cherry red. Kind of gives you the Sojo-like vibes, but in a Hagaromo-style format. We're bringing it with the coral barks, y'all. Get ready for winter. We're back with wildfire. Y'all, you're going to want this wildfire in your garden. This one goes from yellow to the base, orange in the middle, and coral red towards the tips. So you get some really unique winter interest on the bark itself, but you get that in the fall color too, because you're gonna get yellows, oranges, and even some reds in the fall color. One of the reasons I love doing top fives is you get to hear what people in different places like. I've been blown away how many people in hot zones have really, really loved wildfire. A lot of people have this in their top five that are coming from Oklahoma, Texas, high heat settings. It really showed out for them. It gave them everything they wanted in a coral bark type. And like Tim was mentioning, kind of perfectly, wildfire describes it well because it's yellow, oranges then red at the top so you kind of get that growing interest to get brighter in color as you go up the tree showstopper get some oranges to reds in the fall color as well exceptionally durable this one's going to work zone six through nine and it's been one that's been known to show out in those high heat settings i know many people when we first got this plant people were jumping all over it and posting photos of this tree in their fall color mm -hmm. posting photos of the bark and this is a tree that was found by one of our good friends jason stevens but we've sort of helped make it a little popular in the nursery trade when it comes to a lot of Japanese maples. Oh, for sure. And Massive sizes of these right now too. Amazing sizes. A unique winter bark interest Japanese maple you're gonna really like. These trees are so big, I'm gonna have to yeah. hand you one and put one back. <laughs> the curse of too big of plants. All right, y'all, I'm a big fan of this one too. I'm a big fan of Acer Japonicums. T-shirt coming soon. Big fan of Acer Japonicums. Aka Amote. This is one of the first forms of a red blushing Acer Japonicum. Uh, you know, I've been bringing it up a little bit lately. I wonder if this one isn't a Savoldianum hybrid. Sue Egriff mentioned that they could possibly hybridize. I definitely get a little bit more 
of that fuzziness going on in the early spring. What this one's famous for though, is being bright red on the new growth. It's a red foliage japonicum. Yeah, and it gives you that bright red to dark, dark red on that growth as it matures. And then the color of the actual leaves is a dark green as well. These things are too big. I'm going to blow away in the wind. It's like holding a sail right now. I'm like holding an umbrella in this wind. This tree has been known under the name of Acer japonicum or Acer shirasawan ruby, also ruby red or Jim's ruby red. I don't know who Jim was, but Akomote originated in Japan. And I know that at one point Larry Stanley started calling it ruby. And this plant just puts on some amazing colors. Pair this with your moonrise, y'all. You're going to have some killer color combinations out there in the landscape. I even like the blue-green color they get. I do give this one a little more late day shade. Tends to be a very vigorous one at over a foot of growth a year. Guys, look at the sizes on these XLs. These things are massive. I can't even keep it in the camera. I mean, this thing's huge. <laughs> All right, coming up as our 10th item on today's 10 at 10, we got Acer Palmatum Kodo Maru or Kodo Maru. These things are phenomenal. Now these are a little bit different like the Sejos, we did stake these, so we played with the shape of them a little bit. This is a true dwarf. Now, we've staked it up to give it some height right away. These, honestly, they wouldn't be this high in the landscape in 10 years, but we have staked them to almost two and a half to three feet. It is a compact form that's only going to densen up and get tighter from here. They get, got some really growth in our greenhouses this year. You know, in our landscape at Maplewood Gardens, we've got a Kodomaru that's probably about three foot by three foot in about 10 to 12 years. So, I mean, they stay tight, dense, compact. I like it because as this tree matures, it does have some of the smallest foliage of any of the witch sprints. Oh, incredible plant. Uh, one of our smallest overall trees. Definitely check out our favorite witch's broom podcast. We talk about this one being one of those ones that kind of gives you some of those Kiyohime-like vibes. Being a witch's broom from Japan has that purple border to it, but tight, compact habit. Distinctive short and center node. Really cool plant. Yeah, a plant you need to have in your garden, especially if you love those dwarfs. Unique way to grow them too. We're starting out with some really tall ones, so you can kind of have a little bit different shape going on than normal. Still gonna tighten up and get nice and dense. So y'all, this is 10 of our 20 trees getting listed today. If you wanna figure out the full list, check out your weekly email. You know, if you don't get that weekly email, sign for it on mrmaple.com. Take care. God bless. Have a good day.